shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you should drink it in remembrance of me. To preserve my soul and body. Arise, my father's children, go in peace. May the love of God go with you.
It's all right to praise him. It's all right to praise him. Here's what the psalmist said in Psalm 135. He says, praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise him, O oh, you servants of the Lord. You who stand in the house of the Lord. In the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord. Why? Because the Lord is good. Sing praises to his name, for it is pleasant. Sing praises. Sing praises to his name, because it is pleasant. It pleases God. God inhabits. He inhabits the praises of his people. It's all right to praise him. It's all right. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Who are you praising? Jesus. Blessed Savior. He is worthy. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy. He is worthy. Worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. The angels in Revelation 7 put it this way. Blessings and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Why? Because he is worthy of all of our praise. Thank you, Lord, this morning. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for the opportunity to call upon your name once again. Worthy is the Lord. Let everything that has breath Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Lord God, we just praise you this morning for who you are. Thank you just for the opportunity to enter to thy sanctuary once again. It is you that has blessed us, not we ourselves. We thank you, Lord, for every step we can take. We praise you for every heartbeat we feel within our chest. We praise you for the breath that we breathe. We praise you for your redeeming power. Lord, truly you are God. And besides you, O oh Lord, there is none other. Who wouldn't serve a God like you? So we thank you this morning for the privilege of being in New Mount Moriah. Yeah. We thank you for having brought us through another conference here to this very day. We praise you because you're worthy of all praise. Through it all, we've learned to trust in Jesus. Through it all, we've learned to trust in God. So God, we ask that this, this conference here is a spirit-filled conference here. A conference of praise and thanksgiving. A conference of joy, unspeakable joy. A conference of calling upon your name. We thank you right now for all you have done. Have your way, God, this morning. Have your way, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Another day's journey. Another day's journey. But I'm glad, I'm glad about it this morning. 
that I've been allowed to stand unworthily before God's people and to declare the truth of his word because it is his word that is able to change our lives. It is his word that redeems and restores. It is his word that heals and brings joy. It is his word that gives us peace that surpasses all understanding. And so this morning I was asked you to pray for me. That I would be a vessel that God may use for his glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. It's good to be home. Hallelujah. It's good to be home. And it's good to be welcome home. And so I'm thankful this morning to be welcome home. And I don't take it for granted of the privilege of serving the members of this church. Because I'm not worthy to do so. And it's only because of God's grace. I'm able to stand this morning and say, thank you, New Mount Mariah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Elder. Thank you, Bishop, yes. for the privilege of serving in this congregation. Yes. But let me say this. I would be remiss not to thank Presiding Elder Yates, yes. who, who called me mm -hmm. to serve this congregation. Who saw something in me that I did not see in myself. And so I am forever indebted to her for the privilege of this, of serving this congregation. But I'd be remiss not to welcome our new presiding elder. Hans, presiding elder Hansberry and consultant Hansberry to this great church. May God bless them and keep them is my prayer. If you have your Bibles, turn if you will to Titus. Titus chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. We're going to read it together. Amen. It reads, remind them Amen. to be subject to rulers and authorities, mm -hmm. to obey, to be ready for every good work. Amen. For we ourselves, hear this, for we ourselves, for we ourselves were all so foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of rejoicing. Saved and not sentenced. Hallelujah. Our God is a righteous judge. And every first Sunday when I have the opportunity to walk in this church and see the work that the stewardesses has done as it relates to the chancellor well and the communion table, I'm mindful that I deserve to be punished for my sins. I am reminded that I deserve to be punished for my sins. But because of the mercy of God, he saved me instead of sentencing me. Lord, I thank you this morning. I thank you 
And Lord God, this morning, you see, from a legal perspective, if you have reached the sentencing stage of your trial, you've been found guilty by a jury or a judge. And the day comes when the judge will punish you for your actions. But according, according to my research, there are several factors that could influence his decision on the punishment that he hands down. They are called aggravating and mitigating circumstance. Let me explain. If you are or are not a repeat offender, that could influence his sentence. But when I think of my life and reflect upon it, I can say that I was a repeat offender. Hallelujah. Am I the only repeat offender here this morning? According to my research, whether or not someone was injured by what I have done could influence my sentence. How many people we've hurt and wounded from the words of our mouth. According to my research, your background and your character can influence your sentence. What is your background? What is your character? Also, it says that whether or not you showed remorse, how many people have we hurt and showed no remorse at all? Thank you, Lord, this morning. And then it says that even those that you have hurt is called the impact statement. In other words, those that you have hurt, they are allowed to come before the judge right. to make a statement as it relates to you, your offense against them. What if, what if the people that we have hurt through the years could stand before God and tell God all that we've done to offend them. Where would we be this morning? Because I'm sure there's somebody that knows something about us. We can hide from each other, but we can't hide from God. And if they could stand before God and say, God, this preacher hurt me. Where would I be this morning? But I thank God this morning that I heard about a lawyer that never lost a case. And when I found myself in the court of public opinion, I called on the name of Jesus. And Jesus stood by my side and he said, Father, may I have a sidebar? I walked up to his father and said these words, remember the blood. Remember, Father, remember my blood. And the only reason that we were saved instead of sentenced is because of the blood of Jesus. We should have been sentenced, but because of the blood, we have been what? Saved. Thank you, God, this morning. Thank you for saving me. I was guilty, but because... Of the blood of Jesus. I have. You have. We have all. Been saved. And so. And so Paul. Writes to Titus to. Help to instruct him to remind the folks down at New Mount Moriah. Don't treat folks any kind of way. To remind us to live godly in an ungodly world. 
to tell us this morning that attitude towards the ungodly should be the same attitude God had towards us, unconditional love. And that brings me to my first point, if truth be told. If truth be told. There is not a greater reminder than God's word than who we once were. It's good for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training. God's word is designed for us to live a life that is pleasing to him. And if truth be told, we all deserve to be punished. And only by the mercy and grace of God we have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. We also walked in darkness. One day the light of God shined brightly in our lives and we are here this morning to tell God thank you for what you've done for me. If you need a reminder, let me remind you, according to the text, it says, preacher, we were all, we for we ourselves were all so foolish. Yeah, that was me, I'm not sure about you, that was me disobedient deceived serving various lusts and pleasures living in malice and envy hateful hallelujah we didn't even like ourselves hateful and hating one another if truth be told we are no better than the folks now that we talk about. We are no better than the folks we talk about because God saved us by his mercy and his cross. If truth be told, if it wasn't for the unconditional love of God, where would we be today? And I thank God this morning that I was saved instead of sentenced. I'm not sure how long my sentence would have been. But I'm sure it would have been what they call, uh, uh, was it compounding sentences? It goes on at concurring sentences. Yeah, you do eight years, you do eight more. You just continue to serve. Have mercy, God, this morning. Thank you, Lord, this morning. The only thing I had to look forward to was hell, not heaven. And so I'm conscious of God's mercy and grace this morning. I'm conscious of his love. And so I'm looking at the text and I'm saying, Lord, how was I saved? Because verse 2, my first, second point being, but when? That's a transition that takes place. Look at the text, if you will, this morning. It says that even though we were foolish, disobedient, deceived, Serving various lusts and pleasures. Living in malice and envy and hateful and hating one another. Then it says these words. But when? Hallelujah. But when the kindness. Not your kindness. Not my kindness. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward men appeared. When God showed up in our lives. That's when things begin to change. When God showed up and showed us his mercy and his grace, that's when our lives begin to change. But when there was nothing I could do, God showed up. But when sin controlled me, God showed up. Thank you, Lord, this morning for your mercy and your grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Kindness in the text is defined as giving what is necessary to meet people's needs. Hallelujah. What was necessary, the question is, to meet our needs of salvation. The blood of Jesus was necessary to meet our needs. 
God required a perfect sacrifice. And the only sacrifice that would do was his son Jesus. Yes. Giving what is necessary to meet one's needs. Thank you, Lord, this morning. It was necessary, and you gave your son Jesus. He did for us what we could not do for ourselves. I'm glad for the scripture that says, cast your cares upon the Lord. Why? Because the Lord cares for you. If he didn't care for you, you wouldn't be here this morning. If he didn't care for you, you would have been, you would have been sentenced instead of saved. But because he cares for you, he saved you instead of what? Sentencing you. Thank God for the but when this morning. But when the kindness and love of God showed up. Thank you, Lord God, this morning. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. Final point, we did not save ourselves. Hallelujah. We did not save ourselves. It didn't matter how righteous we thought we were. We did not save ourselves. The text says he saved us. How did he do it? Through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. God said, I, I, I'll clean you up on the inside. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. The outside cleaning won't lap, but if I clean you up on the inside, that's how I can save you through faith in my son, Jesus the Christ. He saved us by giving us his spirit and cleansing us of our sins. Without Jesus, we'd have all died in our sins. Now, we often tell folks, I'm saved. But do you really know what saved means? I know I'm saved. What you say for? I don't know, but I'm saved. To be saved means to deliver out of danger. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. To be delivered out of danger into safety. Yeah. That's something to say, I'm safe in his arms. Yeah. Hallelujah. To be delivered out of danger into what? Safety. It means to be rescued from destruction and brought into divine safety. Thank you, God, this morning. That you delivered me from what? From destruction. And you brought me into your divine safety. Church, the blood still works. God delivered us from the danger of sin and the destruction of this world. And brought us into his divine presence. Jesus puts it this way. He says, I give them eternal life. That's divine safety. He says, and they shall not perish. That's divine safety. He says, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. That's divine safety. Hallelujah. And then he says these words. He says, my father who has given them to me is greater than all. And then he says, and no one, not even the new Mount Moriah, is able to snatch them out of what? My father's hand. My father and I are one. No one can snatch them out of Jesus' hand, and no one can snatch them out of his father's hand. Hallelujah this morning. We are safe in his arms. Thank you, Lord, this morning. Thank you, I was saved and not sentenced all because of the blood of Jesus. God has renewed us. He has renewed us. A reason to celebrate this morning that God has redeemed us from a life of destruction and given us the gift of eternal life. 
Legally. Amen. Legally, we were all guilty. Amen. I didn't plead guilty. Mm. But all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. The aggravating and mitigating circumstance were all against me. I was a repeat offender. My background was as filthy rags. My sins impacted my relationship with God and with man. But as I said before, I heard about a man named Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I heard about a man named Jesus. I couldn't have paid, I couldn't afford to pay him. But guess what? Jesus paid it all. I couldn't afford to pay him, but Jesus paid it all and all to him. I owe. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, this morning that you paid it all. And because of his mercy and grace, I wasn't even given parole. Hallelujah. I'm free. Thank God I'm free. No longer bound. Ain't no change. What? Holding me. My soul is resting. Oh, what a blessing. Hallelujah this morning, God. We were all saved and not sentenced. Amen. We were saved because we were lost. There was a show growing up, and I don't know if they're repeating it now. It was called Lost in Space. And on it, there was this computer person, and he would always be flailing his hands, and he'd say, danger, danger, danger. Danger, 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 Will Robinson, danger, danger. Why did he do it? Because he needed to be saved. And you heard the definition of being saved. You're being delivered from destruction to a place of safety. And that is what the Lord wants to do for all of us who have been lost in their life. Lost to sin. Lost for being hateful and hating themselves. Lost. And you can make that decision this morning so that you can be saved instead of sentenced. And so we invite you this morning, those who are in the sanctuary with us and on our various platforms, we invite you to become a disciple of Christ, to be a part of God's family. So that when you feel like you're in danger, 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 you have someone to call on. And we're talking about that lawyer that uh, Reverend Rashad mentioned, and his name is Jesus. He can save you from your sin. He can save you from dangerous circumstances that are within and without you, outside of you. So let's pray together. There may be someone today here and somewhere in God only knows where, who's watching us this morning that needs salvation today. They need to be able to trust in God, know him, make a have a relationship with him through Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you right now for the salvation that you give to us. Thank you, oh God, that you promised that we will not be plucked out of your hands that salvation is ours and it is free, freely given and so we pray right now Lord that someone will say these words along with us Lord I am a sinner and I need your salvation today, forgive me of my sin I believe that Jesus died for my sin and because he did this and because I believe, I have salvation today. 
and we give you thanks and praise in Jesus name someone has received salvation today and if you have here in the sanctuary when you leave let Pastor Rashad know and if you're on Facebook Zoom or YouTube leave us a message or call the church amen thank you for knowing that you're saved and not sentenced. And now a word from our pastor once again. Thank you, Reverend. Uh, we have the announcements up in a moment. But before we go there, I'm going to, uh, Brother Clark, that was a card, I'd like to read it. It says, we're each other's people. We share our joys and bear each other's pain together. We keep it real and hold it down together. We see each other through and make things right together. We show up and we stand strong together. So glad that I've got you to be family with me. Brother Clark and family, God bless you, Brother Clark. My brother Clark, bless you and keep you. At this time, if you'd like to give to the work that God is doing here, as we try to do God's work, God's way, you may do so through uh, mailing it to the church, through Giveify, or your class leaders. I'd like to thank the congregation for your continued support, financial support of your church. Uh, prayer list, please, any prayer requests, have it to your class leaders, give it to your class leader, call the church, or on Wednesday nights during the prayer line, you may uh, join us and ask for prayer as well. This is just a, uh, another showing of our new Facebook page. You may go to our Facebook page and you will find this and it's various means to uh, watch us live right off of the page. Amen. Planning meeting November 17th to 19th. I will be going down to Orlando, my wife and I, on that Wednesday afternoon to see what the bishop has for the church. Bible study on Tuesday evenings, please join us at 6 o'clock. We are currently studying from the book of Titus. Prayer line, as I stated earlier, uh, Reverend Burke on Wednesday, God is using her in a mighty way. That is the access code for those persons that would like to join us. Please do. Oh, okay. You confused me for a minute. <laughs> it looks the same to me, you know. Uh, that was the bishop uh, prayer he does in the morning at, at 7.30. Yeah. 7.30, please join him. Victory starts here, prayer line. That is the dialing number as well as the access code. Amen. All hearts clear. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, praise him. Praise him, praise him. Praise him, praise him. with this offering sweet smelling aroma saved instead of sentence grace peace and mercy from God the Father God the Son God the Holy Spirit rest ruling about in us henceforth and forevermore and all of God people said Amen ah. God bless you and keep you is my prayer.